Why Bradford? <laughs> Why have you brought me here? Are you ready for story time? <laughs> I love Tell that... me a story. Although we were going to be talking about something else. Um, and we were, because there's that new Nick Cage movie that's out. All the, right. But I got something yesterday that took wild for new precedent. It was like, I got a, <laughs> I got a new priority now in terms of something new that's out. I, I belong to this, uh, like screener program, uh, that I've been on it for, I think a couple of years now, like mm-hmm. every now and then they send you like just these early cut screeners to give them feedback and to give them notes back and things like that and like once in a, sometimes I just ignore it because it's nothing really all that interesting then there's other times where I'm like okay there might be something here like one where it was like David Spade and his first dramatic turn as a bad guy or something and uh, uh, another was this uh, one- they call it Ace of Spades <laughs> I wish it's called by Anna late title it was like warning shot or something um, the another one was like they were gonna there, it was a movie it was one nation under God where they were gonna outlaw God from the Pledge of Allegiance and only Kevin Sorbo could stop them I'm like well, well of course watch I so, mean obviously you need a Hercules to oh, yeah. save America um so always I, depend on the Greeks <laughs> I so yesterday I get another email like uh, you're invited to uh, watch this this screen or I'm like okay let me see what it is was invited in quotes by the way <laughs> <laughs> oh here's the thing when you watch it too you enter in like this code and everything to watch it and your email address and it watermarks it on the screen as to always remind you <laughs> you did this to yourself <laughs> it's, it's it's like Hook's invitation yeah. you know, you're cordially invited Peter Pan to come rescue <laughs> when I saw what it was that it's this upcoming Roe v. Wade movie that I've referenced before. Oh, God. And uh, it's just called that's, Roe that's v. Wade. That's probably what they want in the movie is a lot of, oh, God. Yeah, there is a little bit of that in the movie. There's so much in this. So I saw that that's what the movie was, and I'd mm-hmm. referenced this before when I reviewed, like, Unplanned and a couple of uh, these other movies because this thing's been in production it seems like it's been over a year that i heard about this movie so i don't know how long ago they they made it with the copy i watched they're definitely not done yet (laughs) so this was i am now a religious person because i felt like i was in heaven watching this film (laughs) this is i I, for different reasons i take it i was like this was was like a gift from the critic gods (laughs) yes this was Insane. I had to write to just jot down these what notes. Is that a on lover's a note? Yeah. Why is there lipstick on it? <laughs> it was Laura saying goodbye to me. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> it was. I know. I, I that actually reminded me. I got to uh, go out and get some new uh, computer paper. <laughs> What this move? I got plenty of sharpies sitting around. I, obviously, I actually wrote my notes on Laura's face. <laughs> she she is asleep up there. I probably could have. We just prop her in the back seat, and then this happened in the movie. Hey, honey, can you can you turn a little? There you go. Wait, do you hear the casting in this movie? The do tell. So. I'll just let all of this stuff just kind of unfold as I go along. What the movie's Prepare about. Prepare your body, folks. <laughs> and I haven't told you like anything about the movie. No, I don't. I don't know anything. No, you. But yeah. all, all I, I, all I know is the same thing he told me, which is prepare your. Body. I had to call you because I watched this movie yesterday. I watched it by mm. myself. I was like, I'll watch this when Laura's at work. She's not going to want to watch this with me. And I was like. I didn't even ask if she wanted to sit in on the video because, like, after <laughs> she did not, she did not like hearing about unplanned and that midnight screenings. I'm like, I can't do this to her twice, <laughs> especially like when she gets home. Sure, from work. share the misery because <laughs> yeah. I like really hearing about. It. <laughs> oh, you'll love this. Um, the, <laughs> so this all is about um, these two. This is taking place like before the Supreme Court decision on Roe v. Wade. And it is about... Okay. The... So it's a period piece. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. You can tell by the wigs and the cheap Goodwill clothing in it <laughs> that makes it look like a church group is, like, performing Mad Men in front of, like, their, like, congregation. I like it already. So uh, it's about these two... One of them's a doctor. Uh, one of them's a doctor played by uh, Nick Loeb. I'm watching it going, he's 
bad in this. And I go, oh, he also co-wrote and co-directed the movie. Okay, fine. I find this is a common thing, at least from watching your reviews of these films. You get a lot of writer-directors of these who also decide to, like, throw themselves in The Kendrick brothers do Mm -hmm. that. Uh, Yeah, that that happens sometimes, or at least there may be a producer on it or something, or there's some kind of cameo in the movie. The other one, the other guy, it's about these two guys, and the other one is this, like, like lawyer or writer played by Jamie Kennedy. So it's Jamie Kennedy and Nick Loeb, who I think I last saw in Den of Thieves, as these two guys who want their abortion business to be booming. Like, they want to be on the forefront of getting abortion legalized so they could just rake in the dough on this franchising abortion. So to connect it with that other movie you reviewed, these are the McDonald's brothers of abortions. Yeah. This is this is their uh, shakes and fries and uh, oh yeah this movie actually is, but that's not really fair the, the two of them together are the Roy Kroc of abortions. this is now if you got Michael Keaton yeah. to play this guy that'd be amazing <laughs> that is what it is like and there are like that fries and shake line that's like half of this movie's dialogue is all stuff like that there's not really characters in the movie they're all just speaking political one-liners and political statements. So this is all being told in flashback from Nick Lowe being interviewed by Jack Lemmon's son, Chris Lemmon, is interviewing him, going like saying, Uh, he uh. says to him, because now the doctor is like pro-life, and they're like, so why did you do this back then? And the doctor goes like, well, you know, it was the 70s, and like women's lib was a big thing, so I just thought I'd kind of ride that train for a while. (laughs) And when it flashes back, it shows... um, Jamie Kennedy and Nick Loeb interviewing, uh, is that me? Um, yeah, it is. Oh, at first I thought it was going to be Laura, like, are you talking about this movie without me? No, honey, I didn't think you'd want to hear about this movie. Uh, probably. <laughs> Seems like a salesperson. So, um... We know you were in the car, Brad. Pick up! <laughs> so, they're interview. they need, like, a prominent feminist to go along with this plan that they have. So they get this one woman oh, wait, to wait, go... Wait, wait, wait. Let, let's be honest here. Let's just go full into the movie. This evil scheme. <laughs> this, yeah. Oh, there are mad doctors in this movie. Not to jump ahead, but there are. there is like this kind of Peter Lorre <laughs> mad scientist in the film. So the... But the, the woman who's the feminist, they're like, so you want to join our cause? And she says, well, let me tell you this. No woman has ever orgasmed from scrubbing the kitchen floors and I go well there's a kink for everything I, mean, like, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking the same thing I'm like let's let's not judge here that Jamie Kennedy is the far more evil of the two the other guy is like well I want this to be legalized because like when it's a necessity for health reasons and if someone was raped so, so one of them is the McDonald's brother who's like let's not put the powder in the milkshake to make yes. the shakes. And the other one's like, let's just all sell it to Croc. Yes, that is okay. Jamie Kennedy, because Jamie Kennedy says to him, no, we need more. I want abortions on demand. Abort- I want 75,000 abortions a year. 500 a day. Best streaming service ever. Yeah, he abortions liter- on demand. He literally says that. Why didn't they call the movie that? That would have been a great title. He literally goes abortions on demand. Because you would have demand. fooled some people who would have been like, ah, oh, I gotta check oh, yeah. this out. Oh, man. There's even like picket signs in the background saying like abortions on demand and things. So that's like Jamie Kennedy's big thing that he wants in this movie. And when they find, because the, the. Are we getting all this? They then start like auditioning because they need someone who is pregnant to be someone they can represent in this court. Case and okay. that's when they find uh, the the Jane Roe Norma I forget her name but like the the Jane Roe <laughs> oh so, yeah this is the Norma Ray of abortion so they find her and they and she they they write her as just like Cletus the slack jawed yokel in this movie so <laughs> they say they go we found this girl she is she has the education of a fourth grader she's a drug addict she's an alcoholic and a lesbian. Please tell me they sang it in song. Some folk will never lose it too, but then again, you some have folk no old. idea how right you are. <laughs> are you serious? I am dead serious. Um, yeah, they're they're singing in this movie. So they they when they say like and what she's a lesbian, they go. Uh, 
then she is perfect. And when they're interviewing her, she says, uh, now this whole abortion thing, like when you abort it, does it go back or is it like when John Wayne aborts a mission in one of them movies? And they're like, uh, uh, sure, yeah, whatever. And they go, they say to her, they go, so you were raped, right? And she goes, that's like the shifty eyed thing, goes, uh, yeah, raped. Like the worst liar in L.A. Noir. <laughs> now, where the singing comes in, uh, <laughs> Where the singing comes in is that Jamie... No, say it a third time just so it can burrow into my brain. Jamie Kennedy and... When the singing comes in. Yes, there is a song in this. When Jamie Kennedy and Nick Loeb... They're so into abortion in this movie that there is a scene... Who is it? Where them... It was, you know, it was the 70s. Women's yeah. Lib was a big thing. Yeah. So there's a scene where they're in their home and their families are in there mm -hmm. and like the mom is sitting with the kids at the piano and they start this rousing sing-along about abortion which goes uh there's a fortune in abortion there's a gold mine no in the sex line i'm not gonna believe it to until you show this it to me happened this happened no. in the movie. No, it did Jamie not. Jamie Kennedy. Lies! All <laughs> lies! Again, this is not a drama. The Jane <laughs> Roe is so dumb in this. There's when, no, there's no way no human being would put a song like that, even in their shitty abortion, anti-abortion propaganda. Oh, it ends with that, too. No, it's earlier in the movie. But when it does the thing at the end where it goes, and then this happened to this person, this happened to this person, it brings that song back at the end. <laughs> Is Hillary's America too even-handed for you folks? <laughs> we got a film for you. <laughs> I love when, when Jane Roe gives birth because she wanted an abortion, but they needed her to be pregnant. So of she course. gives birth, and it's when she, it's at, right after she gives birth, the nurse is there with the baby, and she's sitting in the bed going, No! They told me I could abort it! No! Of course, of course. <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. That yeah. is also the... Uh, that is also the last we see of her in this movie. Um, <laughs> they just take her out back behind the set and you just hear a gunshot? <laughs> I take I take that back. In the re in the end segment, it shows her being interviewed by a bad, like, Ted Koppel impersonator. Um, you, now, who, who else is in this movie is that you have, like, the, the pro-life group in it mm -hmm. led by a mm -hmm. college professor played by Joey Lawrence. <laughs> Whoa. And, and it doesn't take very long for them to like invoke the Holocaust in this film. <laughs> this sounds like you made it up. No, this, I'm not, this is why I needed someone else here. This sounds like, like Jesus, bro. Like you're spoofing this sort of shitty movie. I was considering just going like to the studio and doing a vlog, just saying, yeah, then this happened, this happened. But I'm like, no, I need to describe this to somebody. I. I don't believe you. Jo I just, you don't believe that there's a scene in this movie where college professor Joey Lawrence <laughs> is doing straw man debates with his pro-choice students that are just them setting him up to always be right. So when uh, when the when the when he goes, so you would murder a child who has a birth defect, and the girl is like. Well, yeah, and Joey Lawrence then goes, oh, so you would have killed Beethoven. <laughs> and they're like, but dum, 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 dum. They're like, what about population control? Joey Lawrence is like, that is Hitler talk. <laughs> I, I feel like the writers of BoJack Horseman in their most depraved, depraved and crazy state. Yeah. Couldn't come up with something this insane as like a spoof of like something that would happen in in Hollyweird or, or even as like a a religious right like film. I, there is no bizarro Rick and Morty alternate universe where I think this is capable of happening. Well, Rick and Morty that segues into uh, I could bring up the Mad Scientist, who is <laughs> there's a scene where Nick Loeb is with this like straight out of like an old horror movie with Peter Lorre 
caricature where this guy's like he's like kind of hunched over in this lab coat in just this bunker looking room going like I have created a device that will make sure you can abort babies in under three minutes you can do 200 abortions a thanks, day thanks Torgo oh yeah no, Torgo that's not how you perform an abortion I must abort this baby for the oh, master and the guy is the, the doctor is like oh my god you're right it works because there's a line of just these there's like a couple or a few women there just with their legs up and he's like he's like wow that was quick moves along to the next one oh my god this is so fast you're right i could do 200 of these in a day for science <laughs> <laughs> and jamie kennedy plays his part like if on the jamie kennedy experiment he had just this kind of um jewish stereotype character because at one point they're talking about how they're going to uh, get the public to go along with their pro-choice crusade. Oh, and yeah. Jamie Kennedy goes like, like, oh, don't worry about it. We control all of the media. <laughs> I really just want to shout to the guy that walked by, help, help. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! After that, he calls uh, he calls his rabbi, who is in charge of this. Somebody, I'm being assaulted by bad taste. <laughs> he he calls his rabbi, who's like in charge of like this abortion clinic. Jamie Kennedy's on the phone, and the guy is just like, is like, um, Larry Bubula. I'm glad you called. He actually says Bubula, and he's sitting across from it this. Sounds couple. like a BoJack sketch. He's sitting across from this couple, and they. Uh, the woman like wants an abortion she's there with a guy and then she's like oh this is just my lover this isn't my husband and the old rabbi's just like like not even your husband hi vey and <laughs> so <laughs> I can't and then they start doing abortions Stop! out of a they start the rabbis and the priests start doing abortions out of the Four Seasons Hotel in which this raid happens where in slow motion the cops are just lugging out buckets and buckets and buckets of what must be hundreds of fetuses <laughs> um Oh, finally, Thanos' dream realized. Being in charge of the media plays into the fact that there is a dramatic sequence in this movie mm -hmm. where um, Stacy Dash is in the film, and she's a pro-life doctor in it, and she's standing in a room with her mom, mm -hmm. this older woman, who looks down at the TV, and the abortion episode of Maud is playing. Um, so you have it cuts to B. Arthur on the TV talking about having an abortion, and it does a slow motion like dramatic drop of the dishes that Stacy Dash's <laughs> that Stacy Dash's mom is holding. No. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. They put it on an episode of Maud. Oh, they have all of these TV shows in their pockets. I can't believe it's not Planned Parenthood. <laughs> and the uh the doctor ends up having uh a change of heart towards the end of it where it shows him giving an abortion and it's kind of like the scene from unplanned where the woman at the beginning sees like a sonogram no, you abortion. don't give an abortion brad abortion only takes <laughs> it takes oh life. it gives in this movie <laughs> this movie was an endless source of gifts um so oh and like unplanned this movie also has a cameo by the my pillow guy as a reporter in one scene uh so when the doc so it's showing the doctor looking at the san sonogram that has the fetus on it and the little probes come down and the fetus on there is just like ah, 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 ah! And, it's, and then it's so it's the opening of look who's talking yes only an abortion happens do we yeah. get bruce willis to be like oh what's that oh god oh, oh. welcome it to the shows, party pal it shows the cgi fetus's mouth <laughs> go just make a it doesn't have him go no but he mouths it he goes ah! welcome to the placenta pal <laughs> he, he's the doctor's then on the floor going what have i done and it shows him at church like screaming at god like you told me this would be for the greater good how could you have forsaken me lord and then he has just like a turn of heart and becomes this like 
anti-abortion active uh Active because of the, because of the CGI fetus and and everything that was uh, screaming no on the sonogram. Um, my mm. favorite part of this mm-hmm. movie is mm. um, the Supreme Court. <laughs> the Supreme Court is played by uh, John Voight, um, Corbin Burnson, William Forsyth, John Schneider. Uh, Robert Davi, speaking of Die Hard. I just like that with, because, of course, we had to have John Voight in this. Oh, yeah, he's... Uh, Somewhere. He's Warren Berger. Uh, he's, the, he's the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. So you actually do have all of these... I actually kind of like these. I could have seen a whole movie of this with just these actors, like... <laughs> Going behind each other's backs and backstabbing each other and blackmailing each other over abortion. They need, like, they need to do a movie that and just call it The Supremes. Yeah. And then have nothing but Motown music playing over the, But my favorite part of this casting is that, so John Voight goes, you know what, there's still two seats that need to be filled by Nixon, so we're going to delay this, because right now it looks like I'm losing. So, um, Justice Berger comes into it. And uh, or not, uh, Justice Powell. Would Justice, you like a Justice Burger? <laughs> Justice Powell comes into it. Uh, Nixon's two appointees, one mm-hmm. of them being Powell, and they think, well, great, these will, these guys will be on on our side, uh, so abortion will stay illegal. And Justice Powell comes in, and it's Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Steve Gutenberg. The Goot? <laughs> yeah, Steve Gutenberg. He's in it for a couple of scenes. And like I said, these scenes are the best ones in the movie where it's these guys being the Supreme Court justices. So Steve Gutenberg comes in and John Schneider's like, so you're going to be on our side, right? And Gutenberg's like, no. <laughs> Justice Mahoney! <laughs> oh, um... Please tell me one of the Supreme Court justices was like making like silly sounds like in police academy. Like, I wish. <laughs> or just getting blown underneath the <laughs> underneath the stand. Like I watched. That's John Voight should have been Commandant Lassard. <laughs> yeah. Um, I watched the like. There were a lot of things about it that were unfinished. Like un. What I'm assuming are unfinished Just like effects. the fetuses in the movie. Yeah, because, like, uh, there's... there's unf- I'm probably going to hell for that one. <laughs> there's unfinished effects in this movie that I hope are in the final product. So when it shows, uh, like, Maud on TV or mm. one of these news things, it's clearly just a photo of an old TV with the screen greened out. and ve- It looks more <laughs> real. Just leave that effect. In I there. hope they do. It looks more realistic when I've done that on the cinema snob. Like, the- because anybody watching a film like this... They don't care about anything but the political point. They're not yeah. going to care if it looks like shit. They're not going to care about art, integrity, logic. That's, like it's just that's all they want is their political point. They're not going to give a shit how it looks. Yeah, because like like you could literally serve them uh-huh. a plate of shit, but if yeah. you put a little flag on top that said you know pro life, yeah. Like that's like, and I'm not. That is not, by the way, because I'll get quoted out of context. That anybody who is pro-life is like that. I'm saying the sort of people who just seek out these movies in yeah. an unironic way. That's mm-hmm. all they're looking for. This is a bottom. Like, I'm not of the saying anybody is pro-life. Like, yeah, like it's no, said, this I is get... bottom of the barrel, even for that. Like, so this. I mean, maybe the movie knows its goddamn audience. I well, know. I mean, I get comments from people from a lot of people who are pro-life and say like. Yeah, this movie's dog shit. Yeah, uh, like stuff like Unplanned or, or Voiceless or movies like that. But my favorite of these effects, and I hope to God this is in the final cut, is um, there's a part where they're looking at a, the New York Times, <laughs> where it's announcing Nixon's two Supreme Court picks, and it's someone holds up, and it's the actual paper, uh-huh. but they put in. A picture of the two actors, so Gutenberg and I forget the other guy. We somebody it, scotch taped it. No, it's like put in in post where it's tracking along with the movement of the paper. <laughs> Good, Brad, remember that scene in Austin Powers? Yeah, they're doing the group therapy and Carrie mm-hmm. Fisher's like, 
hey, tell us about, you know, you're, uh, you know, and he's like, you know, uh-huh. I, I was thrown in a burlap sack and beaten. My mother was a Belgian prostitute who had webbed feet. Mm-hmm. I'm like Carrie Fisher in that scene right now. Yeah. We have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> And no the, more. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was like the same effect when it's like tracking a black box over like nudity, only it's actors over like a newspaper. But what was weird about it is that there would be some scenes where it would say on the screen, um, visual effects haven't been put in yet. But it wasn't over scenes like that. It was over scenes where, it, or it was like, it would say like, temp effect or I will something bet you, like I that. will bet you a thousand bucks the effects will be better than what you got but still but it, when they would not good. when they would put when they would put up temp effect temp effect mm-hmm. not in final product it wouldn't be over scenes like that it was over scenes where I don't even know where there would be a special effect like uh there's a, there's a part with it's the, like a dialogue scene effect not finished it's like yeah what are they gonna insert this with a better looking celebrity? <laughs> right. Yeah, I didn't know what they were referring to, and because yeah, it was just a dialogue scene with the justices in like the halls of Congress. <laughs> oh my wow, God. how did they get Adam Driver for this? Like this CGI'd face. I was gonna <laughs> say like, is it gonna be a wampa in the background? Like, <laughs> whenever I watch the final cut of this, this was. I haven't. I haven't seen every movie like this, but I've seen a lot of them. This was. Um, th- this was probably the worst because there can at least be as like hateful as the life zone was like it was shot well um, voiceless was shot better than this the acting was better in voiceless you can't be good at least be good looking yeah like uh, it's just like high school <laughs> it's, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> These movies clearly peaked with... If you can't be a decent human being, well, yeah. just be good-looking. That's all you need to survive. Um, this is, like, unplanned on steroids. It's every single bad thing about unplanned, but multiplied by, like, a hundred. It's... It was a thousand times more batshit than I thought it was going to be going into it. I had no idea it would just be this endless slog of a gold mine of a wretched... Horrible movie. <laughs> so, am I the only one who appreciates the irony that they have, in fact, made a cinematic abortion? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, maybe this is maybe we've gone full circle now. Well, yeah, they're apparently they're doing what this mad scientist doctor in, and they can churn these out quick now, much like <laughs> abortion. Just churn out one of these movies every three minutes, two hundred at a time. But at least it has Steve Gutenberg. Yeah, he was think, good in it. You think the stonecutters are responsible for that? <laughs> <laughs> he was, yeah, he was. Or is that punishment for letting Homer slip in? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Jane Roe is portrayed like Homer Simpson in this movie. Uh, I like. I like Steve Gutenberg. That that's that just makes me sad. Well, he like I said, like he is among the group that's the best part of the movie, the Supreme Court justices. <laughs> so, I highly recommend. Um, no idea when this is coming out. I was it was a test screening. I'd say like, don't bother watching it, but then again, oh, like watch this. This will make the exact amount of money it will make no matter what. Yeah. Like these films always do, they're they're kind of foolproof. It's like yeah. you, they'll either make just enough mm-hmm. because you'll get all the weird church groups showing up. Yeah. Um, the fact that they made her such a hick is kind of ironic because I feel like that's like a commentary on the audience you don't want to make. But... Well, she was like it ends with an actual interview, and it's like, yeah, she seems pretty southern certainly but in this she's this close your phone or mine mine. like this she's like this close to just randomly eating a bar of soap (laughs) and like humping an extension i'm just saying once once or twice um i've been at a theater where they've bust in Mm -hmm. to see the films and it always looks like the holiday deal at the old country buffet. <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying, the audiences they bust in for these things, not all of them, they tend to be a little more rural. 
And I think I think the I ones did in, a bunch of these, yeah. The ones the ones in Illinois, I think they actually bust them from Indiana. I have I mean, been at some with buses because Chicago because Chicago yeah. is the only place that would play it. Mm-hmm. So don't know if you want that that kind of like commentary in your film where you get a hick or like. <laughs> Oh, I, I love being in like full audiences for this. I have been multiple times, <laughs> unplanned. Def- I'm always the youngest one, Adam. Too. <laughs> it, it's like hee haw, the next generation. Um, so <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. That just seems that seems odd to me that they would do that. But you know, whatever. I like. <laughs> I don't know, man. I have you know. I have my own thoughts on the A word. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. I hate these like fucking propaganda films. Like, oh, that's just, all this is. I fucking hate propaganda films. I'm, yeah. I'm one of the people that like I don't like watching Bill Maher. I don't like watching Michael Moore. Mm-hmm. Like, and that stuff's preaching the choir. Like when it comes to someone like me, and I'm just like that's just not my thing. So I the, like these sort of movies. Ironically, I think there's a special place in hell. For <laughs> um, I feel like I hope they if there's any there's any cosmic justice, yeah. they'll end up there. Like what the I oh man, like just shock. Like but 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 I made this, and then the devil's yeah. like yeah yeah you did yeah. for for my own um, personal like reasons. Like I hope they keep making these because I'll definitely do an episode uh, on this. Well, you'll have like, material for life. Yeah, this gives sure. me. T- <laughs> but yeah, no, my I'm not judging anybody who's pro life, but uh-huh. I think the very the niche audience the the crazy fringe audience of anybody who might be normal pro-life. So uh-huh. that, then go to the farthest extremes of that. That's the crazy, what this is. That's what this is. And I'm like, them I'll judge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so look so, for, uh, oh God. Look for, <laughs> that was story time. <laughs> Now you have the rest of your day to enjoy <laughs> after that nightmare in front of flashlights that I'm telling you. I'm just going to be thinking of like a raid hauling out like baby parts all day. <laughs> like, to song. There's to song. A fortune to in an abortion. I have had that stuck in There's... my head. Well, it's that time, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well... God bless abortion. Because <laughs> uh, we don't believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, post credit song. I I'm not better for hearing any of this. I feel much richer having told this story. <laughs> I'm glad I could make Thank you. you thank you so much. Even when you don't Laurel, thank you. Too. Even when you don't drag me to a movie. Let me describe I somehow this shit. I somehow end yeah. up in the shit one. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> Just the review for this makes it on your worst movies of the year list at the end. I'm, I, I'm like the cinematic equivalent of Mikey. Yeah. yeah, give it to Mikey. He'll do anything. He'll watch anything. <laughs> Let Brad watch this. All right. We'll be back this weekend with the rhythm section and Gretel and Hansel. So thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you.